It's me, it's Mordekainen, and now I'm actually on a horse. <laughs> actually, no, I'm not. Hello and welcome. It is Monday. It's 8 o'clock in the morning. It's the 24th day of January 2022. It's about 55 degrees and sunny here in Ventura, California, with a wind warning and a high surf warning. And it's Super Bowl week. Super Bowl Sunday's coming up. I think the Rams, but not sure. I don't know. Nobody's told me who I'm, play who I'm voting for yet, so... I don't even know who's playing. All right, it's Monday, which means it's time to take a look at the news. What has happened since we last looked at the news on Friday? Some stuff. Mm hmm. So we've got a couple stories. I don't know which one to talk about. Uh, obviously, I guess our number one story is the stuff going on with the Legend of Vox Machina on Amazon, and of course, the nonsense involving. Mordecanians, and we have some more Mordecanian nonsense. So as we announced earlier on Friday, D&D Beyond has pretty much said no, they're not going to be changing the format of D&D Beyond. They will be importing the Monsters of the Multiverse book as soon as it becomes digitally available to them, which we believe is in, going to be in May. But they are not going to backwards alter any of the pre-existing monsters to the new format. So basically we'll have a whole bunch of monsters of the old format, and then a whole bunch of new monsters of the new format that D&D Beyond has not said whether they're just going to have two separate um, layouts, monsters before Mordekainen, monsters after Mordekainen, or if they're going to have a toggle um, where they can just switch back and forth. Uh, probably the first, because going in and rewriting all the code would cost them a lot of time, energy, and money. Which, you know, since Wizards of the Coast is not giving them that money, and Wizards of the Coast has actually sort of said, screw you, you have to put it this way, D&D Beyond in return is saying, no, no we don't. Which means the general review, information, opinion of D&D Beyond, and the general world of role-playing in general, I said the word general way too many times there, is that, and as I've already also said, Several times. If you already have the original D&D Monster Manual, if you already have Xanthers, and if you already have Mordekainen's Book of Foes, you do not need to purchase Monsters of the Multiverse. Because every monster in Monster of the Multiverse you already have. And if you already have the uh, paid-for Xanthers Monster Manual and uh, Mordekainen's Tomb of Foes on D&D Beyond, there's absolutely no reason for you to purchase Monsters of the Multiverse, because again, you already have the information. And if you want to see the monsters under the new format, well, guess what? Princess of the Coast already put that up online for free about two weeks ago. So, yeah, there's absolutely, unless you don't have those two books, there is no reason whatsoever for you to buy Monsters of the Multiverse, other than it's backwards compatible. Except, of course, it's not backwards compatible because they didn't change anything. They just rewrote stuff and removed things. We have our first in-depth review of um, Mordekainen's Monsters in the Multiverse. And it's not very good coming in at a C. Or in, um, and again, generally the same thing is lots of pretty art. The lore's gone. Stuff I already have. Why do I need this book? Uh, the only reason to get it, the gift set that comes out this week, next week on the 25th, is if you want the DM screen. And if you don't already have Xanthers and um, Tasha's. But then since everything in Xanthers is in Mordekainen's, so you don't really need to buy the gift set unless you want the DM screen and Tasha's. So really, chances are if you play 5e, you already have everything you need. You do not need to buy Mordekainen's. Sorry, Wizards of the Coast, this might not have been your best choice. Moving on to the other big controversy of the week involving... What? A controversy involving Critical Role? Critical Role fans upset? No. That never happens. Okay, so Critical Role has had a busy week with several announcements regarding the upcoming animated series, Legends of Vox Machina which will be on Amazon. They have a release schedule. They also really have hinted that there's some other voices that are be joining them despite besides the critical role class, including bum, 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 David Tennant. I don't know how they got Tennant to 
come on. He's playing a character called General Krieg. I don't know who that is, but wow, what a uh, crown. I mean, I don't think David Tennant has ever mentioned any interest in role playing, but he has kids. So probably the kids said, Dad, you've got to do this cartoon voice. And he's like, well, I've just did Around the World in 80 Days. and um, So sure, I'll do something for my kids and do the cartoons. Or who knows, maybe he is a fan of D&D and Mox and Critical Role. I don't know. I've never met the guy. Uh, speaking of David Tennant, uh, if you're wondering who's going to replace Jodie Whittaker when she steps down as the doctor at the end of this year, the number one... Uh, coming in at 16 to 1 for votes and betting is that they will rehire Den David Tennant to replay the Doctor, which would be weird because it would be only the second time where a Time Lord has reworn re the same face. Uh, if you don't count the curator, it would be the first time. Moving on to other news, weather and sports. Xanthers, uh, critical role, uh, Okay, Green Ronin has announced the upcoming Kickstarter for a brand new standalone game called Cthulhu Awakens. This new game will use the Age Engine system, which you've already seen in Blue Rose, Dragon Age, the Expanse role-playing game, and Fantasy Age. Taking place in the weird century, the game will allow you to play cosmic horror at any point from 1920s to the present day. Uh, Green Ronin states that they have deviated from Lovecraft's work to create a more inclusive version of the Missos with diverse design team. How do you make Cthulhu inclusive? I mean, you can't get more inclusive than Cthulhu. Cthulhu doesn't care. He's going to eat your brain. I don't care who you are. I don't care what you are. I don't care what you look like. I don't care what you identify as. I'm going to eat your brain. So, I don't know. I guess it's going to be a gay Cthulhu? I mean, and you already... Green Ronin, you already have a system that covers multiple centuries. You've already done that with the age system. So all you're doing is redoing something you've already did and adding Cthulhu and making it diverse, which I don't know how you make Cthulhu more diverse. Yeah. Okay, speaking of diversity, uh, Gen Con has announced that if there is a physical Gen Con this year, they will allow people to display pronouns on their guest badges. They are now they, actually the original one, which I thought had a lot of fun with, was they were going to uh, they were going to acknowledge pronouns. Now, if you didn't read the rest of the article, if you just read that, Gen Con will acknowledge pronouns it means if you're going to go wait, you didn't acknowledge pronouns before. Not sure how that works. Hey, where did uh, you? Bobby and, St and Jenny go. Oh, I sent downstairs to get. But what they went to say is they met, they were going to acknowledge pronouns in regards to your badge, in regards to how you identify. But they didn't make that clear either. So again, my mind instantly went to any pronoun. Can I identify as me? What about nobody? What about thou? Thou was a pronoun. But <laughs> now, now they've clarified that no, it's the gender pronouns. He, him, she, her, they, them, he, she, they. At which point, of course, I think, oh, well, then can I identify as them? A plural? I identify as them, That's, which is more than one person. And you know what? If I'm going to identify as them, I'm going to hire a little girl to follow me around and occasionally point at me and go, them, them as in regards to the famous movie, Them. Anyways, the moral of this story is, is that before you make a press release, Gen Con, you probably should be 100% sure that a nitpicking jerk like me is not going to see that and go, so you never acknowledged pronouns before? And speaking of conventions, one of the world's largest tabletop gaming conventions has a new owner. International Spiel Tag, better known as Essence Spiel, is now owned by Spidelmance EG. Yes, I think that is how the word is pronounced. S P I E L W A R E N M E S S E E G. Spidelmance, a German trade fair organizer founded in 1950 and an owner of an international toy fair in Nuremberg. The management team will now remain in place, but now the convention will be run by this new company, 
instead of the old company. I guess this is a big European international gaming board gaming thing. And now we have Humble Bumble News. What is going wrong in the world of Bumbles? Fat Dragon Games and Humble Bumble released a Dragonlock and Ravenfall 2D and 3D printable terrain bundle this week. This bundle includes the 3D printable terrain from the Dragonlock series, along with accessories and miniatures plus 2D terrain, terrain i.e. maps, from the Easy Dra Dragon and Ravenfall sets that can be printed on standard inkjet and laser printers. Uh, or oh no these are the construction things uh yeah so i guess they're the you know how they have these ones where you can cut them out and put them together uh okay the spun of bundle benefits children's miracle network hospital uh we have also a 3d adventure bundle uh with 50 ready to print miniatures from i guess the same company uh and this interesting that each one of the 3d miniatures that you can print out also comes with a stat block that's kind of cool and this one event uh, goes to the American Cancer Society. From Bundle of Holding, we have a Palladium Fantasy 2E bundle this week. Starter collection is $17.95, $18. Includes Palladium Fantasy 2E, three Palladium Fantasy supplements, the Western Empire, and Library of Belathard. The bonus collection contains eight Palladium Fantasy World Sourcebooks. Obviously, this is probably the... Are there enough? Eight? Two E sourcebooks to be eight yet? I don't know. I th think there's only one. So these are probably older ones. From Sigil Stone, we have the complete collection for $15 of the Five Tor Torches Deep run. We have Five Torches Deep, the Five Torches Deep supplement, Vagabonds of Defid. Two Vagabond Supplements and Darkota, City on the Sea of Glass, for $15. We also have a Palladium 1E collection. Starter collection for $13 completes, can, contains Palladium, the role-playing game, Island of the Edge of the World, Arms of Nargus Tor, Palladium Fantasy Game Master's Kit, and the Palladium Fantasy Paper Miniatures. I played Palladium 1E. I haven't heard of either of those. <laughs> The bonus collection considers, contains Old Ones, Adventures on the High Sea, Adventures in the Northern Wilderness, Ying Sloth Jungles, and more printable miniatures. Again, I played pa Pathfinder for years. I've never heard of any of these. Are, are these Palladium products? Oh, okay. oh, okay, I read it wrong. Yeah, these are Palladium products. I'm sorry. Uh, I don't know why it came up under Pathfinder. Oh, it's a misprint on their part. Okay, I'm sorry. This is for the Palladium role-playing game, fantasy game from Palladium, makers of Hero Heroes Unlimited, and it is a badly written. For the one roll engine, we have Godlike, Wild Talents, Better Angels, and OER Freebies. This is a $15 for the one roll engine. Godlike is a superhero role-playing game. And then we have a bonus collection of Black Devil's Brigade, Will to Power, Grim Full War, E Collapse, and The Favored Land. Um, haven't heard that one mentioned in a while. And finally, on Bundle of Holding, we have a Mork Borg collection. We have for $13 The Box of Shadows, Bridges of Muir, Callow's Monsters, and Fisk Borg. And the bonus collection includes some more stuff for the award winning. Doom Metal tabletop role-playing game that is Mork Borg. So we have one from Sigil Stone for Five Torches Deep. That's my recommendation. We have one for Palladium that for some reason is written badly. We have one for Pathfinder. We have one for Run World Engine. And we have one for Mork Borg. If you're interested in investing in one of those two, I would either go with the Mork Borg or the Five Torches Deep. And that seems to be it. Oh, wait, I do have one more story. Okay. The Known World, which later became N Mistara from BECMI edition of Dungeons and Dragons, started by Tom Maldive and Lauren Schick, was a campaign that ran from 1976 to 1978. A player from that game saved the house rules, as well as his own overview, 
and he, he has scanned them into OD&D booklets by Designers and Dragons author Sharon Applecline. You can find them on this Google Drive link in the form of eight PDFs. There's more information about the contents in this thread. So if you are interested in some of the Moldavi Beckme work, um, yeah, somebody wrote this all down and then scanned it finally. It's now it's available. I'll put a link to the Google Drive below. That's pretty cool. Uh, that's probably my favorite thing of this week. So in closing for this week's nose, don't get more to Canaan. Uh, uh, Critical Role is coming out with their anime thing and they have some voices. David Tennant, wow. Some other stuff, a Hannibal bundle, the thing, the bundle, blah, 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 blah. Is there any other news? We do have one more story regarding Critical Role, but I'm going to save that for a separate vlog because it's ridiculous and worthy of a separate blog. Till next time, if you appreciate any of these words that are badly coming out of my mediocre mouth, let me know. If you don't appreciate this content, let me know. I can't fix it if you don't tell me what's broken. And as long as the criticism is creative, I'll actually pay attention to you. Till next time, I've been the OGGM, your guide to all tabletop role-playing game news, weather, sports, and general internet nonsense. And now, look at me. I'm still Mordecai, and I'm still on a horse. <laughs> Get out of my multiverse.